Welcome back, y'all. Ryan Hall here with the weather forecast. A cross-country storm is working its way onto the West Coast, bringing drenching rains to low-lying areas and feet of snow in the mountains across the West. As this storm traverses over the Rockies, it's going to get stronger and develop a low-pressure system, and the counterclockwise motion will spark a cold front-driven line of severe thunderstorms through the Deep South. Then the threat becomes rain and flooding in the Southeast as this thing just keeps chugging along. But look at this. Snow is possible in the Northeast as a new low pressure center forms off the coast. Some will get a little snow and some will get a lot of snow, but one thing's for sure, we've got a blizzard on the way up here in the Northern Plains. All right, so let's take a look at the Euro model and watch that low pressure center as it deepens here around Tuesday at 1 p.m. This is when we're expecting to see severe weather in the South and a blizzard up here in the Northern Plains. This is gonna cause a bunch of problems. We're talking about winds between 30 and 60 miles an hour. We're talking about heavy blinding snow. Obviously, inter any interstate travel is gonna be completely halted up here for a brief period of time at least during the 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 strongest part of the storm uh, but uh, even after that it's going to take a while uh, for them to get things cleaned up because I think that this is going to be one of those storms especially right here between 7 a.m and let's say 1 a.m uh, Tuesday into Wednesday where we see two to three inch per hour snowfall uh, totals constantly and we see uh, you know, that blowing and drifting snow because it's going to be very cold up here uh, at the same time so that's going to continue to cause problems but watch how the low pressure center, instead of kind of deepening and latching on and, and kind of trajecting off to the uh, north and east, it kind of just sits here and unravels itself. And and, and when that happens, the winds are going to slow down. The snow is going to become less intense, but we're going to continue to see snow up here all the way through Thursday. And that's going to add a lot to the total. Some people will see over two feet of snow, especially in South Dakota there by the time this is all said and done. Now, watch how the energy transfer happens here. You see that uh, low pressure center, it kind of goes away. Uh, in the northern plains, but a new one forms over here off the coast as this tries to bring some potentially significant snow even to the interior northeast. Check it out. Pennsylvania, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, western Massachusetts, Maine, maybe some very heavy snow around Friday, December 16th at 7 p.m. Look at that. That would definitely be a significant snowstorm for you guys. Heavy rain and winds on the coast, but this thing does finally get out of here and it skedaddles around 1 a.m. on Sunday. Okay, but look at this huge cold air mass settling in behind all right we'll talk more about that right here in a second this is definitely one of the more stacked patterns for a christmas snowstorm i have ever seen but we've got more important things to talk about in in the <laughs> in the near uh, term here we'll take a look at snow accumulations at the end of the video but first we've got to focus on the southern side of this Okay, um, Tuesday and Wednesday, I, I do think we're going to have some severe weather and, and it still looks like it's going to be very intense. Now, Monday, I think we'll also have a slight problem on Monday as well with some isolated hailers in uh, Oklahoma and Kansas. But the real stuff starts happening on Tuesday afternoon. Okay, from Oklahoma into Arkansas, down towards Louisiana, especially uh, the farther south you go, the more moisture there will be to work with. I put together this graphic here that shows how this uh, big area of moisture is going to come up and then the cold air is going to hit it and then that's where the storms are going to form right along that boundary and the farther south you go the more moisture you have there is an enhanced risk of severe thunderstorms from eastern texas into western mississippi on tuesday and tuesday night severe weather including tornadoes is possible in the affected area so this is expected to start over here in eastern texas and arkansas but it'll continue all the way into the delta region by late in the night into early in the morning on wednesday you see the little red blobs there that's where we think thunderstorms could be occurring and all during this time period, we are also going to have an increased upper level or mid-level uh, wind stream, we call the lower level jet, that could interact with these storms and uh, provide enough wind shear to produce tornadoes. And this is the kind of environment that could certainly cause strong tornadoes as well. That's why we already had that enhanced risk of severe weather. I wouldn't be surprised if the parameters stay the same as we go forward, that this turns into a moderate risk of severe weather. And then that's, of course, going to spark a uh, live stream from us here here on the channel. On the main channel, I should say, not this channel. Here's what the radar could look like as we go forward. You can see Monday night into Tuesday morning, we're going to see what 
is an attempt at severe weather over here in Texas and Oklahoma and Kansas, but once again, I'm not too concerned about that. The real action starts here uh, Tuesday. Notice how we get some stronger storms trying to pop up in Texas as they move into Arkansas. A really interesting thing to note here is that this looks completely linear, at least according to this one model. The line of storms is still going to be a problem. We could definitely still see uh, tornadoes and, and stuff like that, uh, but when you have a line of storms, the main threat becomes damaging winds. If we see, and this is still a possibility as we go into Tuesday evening, uh, more of these storms kind of popping up out in front of the main line and their isolated supercells, that's when the tornado threat will kind of amplify. And of course, this is only one model. We'll have a lot more of these to look at tomorrow and the next day. Uh, so we'll know more about what's going to happen as we analyze those. And like I was saying, the farther into the future we go, the more the focus shifts towards the east. Now, once the storm system makes it past the Mississippi River, especially on Wednesday, uh, we do have a, a chance of severe weather down here in southern Mississippi, southern Alabama, maybe even into the Florida Panhandle. Uh, and that's why we have a day four slight risk of severe weather from the Storm Prediction Center out here as well. Once again, it's suppressed pretty far to the south because that's where most of the moisture is going to be. All right. But everybody north of this line, for example, is mainly going to be seeing rain. That's that's going to be the main problem here. And that rain is going to be heavy at times, especially as this gets into uh, Georgia, East Tennessee, into the Carolinas. Uh, I, I do think we're going to have a little bit of a flood problem here. I put together this graphic that shows that line of storms moving through and then dropping the rain behind it where you see the oranges and the reds. We're talking about two, three, four inches of rain there. And then, of course, we might actually have some problems with freezing rain and ice in the higher elevations here in Virginia, West Virginia, up into Pennsylvania before that turns into snow up there into the interior northeast. OK, so uh, severe weather, rain, snow and probably some very windy rain snow <laughs> like that that's 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 your official forecast there for you guys there you go all right now let's talk about what we all want to hear about okay how much snow are we going to get up here where the blizzard's going to happen in south dakota once again a widespread 8 to 12 inches where you see the pinks and the the lighter pinks and stuff this is from northern colorado up into the, mostly in north dakota and south dakota southeastern montana eastern portions of wyoming will get hit pretty hard by this but i'm most confident in a shutdown storm at least for a brief period of of time uh, in portions of South Dakota and North Dakota. Okay. Same thing up here in, in Minnesota. A lot of you guys are going to end up with more than six inches of snow, but the transfer of energy will be happening around this time. Um, and then that's going to go for you guys up there in Wisconsin, the UP of Michigan as well. Now over here in upstate New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, this is where things get a little tricky. That's farther in the future. Right now, this model is showing two feet of snow for some of you guys, but the deterministic model runs just one model. This isn't exactly what's going to happen, but Still fun to look at and fun to show for right now. This part of the storm, I'm not so sure about. This part is definitely going to be a problem right here in the middle. Uh, it, this is pretty close, but I would I would expect less snow totals uh, than what this model is showing right now. And then, of course, going even farther into the future, like I said, we've got this huge cold mass of air coming into the picture on Christmas week. And what happens with that is still up in the air. But man, I, I don't think I have ever seen such a stacked pattern for uh, snow storms in the east coast since i've started like really heavily looking at uh, models like this i'll explain more in a future video once we're not focused on the severe weather stuff but man that is some cold air for december and there's just so many storms that are going to be able to interact with it i mean geez louise man let's look at the temperature anomalies just for fun i'm telling you what like if we don't get a snowstorm out of this talk about the waste of a century if you're in the east and you like snow uh, like this video and i'll do my best to make sure it snows for you. And then also, if you're in the deep south, if you're in either of these risk areas, uh, whether it's on Tuesday or Wednesday, make sure you are weather aware and make sure you stay tuned to this channel and my main channel. Of course, I'm going to have another update for you tomorrow. If anything changes, I will definitely have an update for you on Tuesday and probably even a live stream. So uh, subscribe to the main channel, subscribe to this one, and we will just keep you informed, son. Okay. I've got a lot of stuff going on in like real life outside of YouTube as well. So it's, it's, it's been hard for me to kind of uh, find time for this, but during situations like this, I'm always going to do that. All right. So um, I'm going to be here and you're going to be here because you're going to subscribe right now, turn notifications on, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Ooh.